almost all the great religions of the world are in some way associated with a drink. Judaism and Christianity with wine. Islam with coffee. Hinduism with the milk of sacred cows. Buddhism with tea. And uh, in one way or another, these sacred drinks are used for sacramental purposes. And a sacrament, defined uh, at least in the Anglican Church as the outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace, is a very common feature of religion throughout the world, although one which is, I would say, highly disapproved of by many people living in the modern West under the influence of Protestantism and humanism. A sacrament, in other words, is a method of giving spiritual power or insight through corporeal means, as for example in the sacrament of baptism, uh, Orthodox Christians believe that through the pouring on of water, a physical substance, a person may be in some way united with the power or the grace of God, or that the right formula said by the right person over bread and wine may transform them veritably into the body and blood of Christ, so that whoever partakes of them on the principle that you are what you eat becomes transformed into Christ. Behind the more obvious drinks or sacramental liquids associated with the various religions, there are some religions which employ more potent substances. And so uh, one associates Islam and the whole Arabian culture with the use of hashish. And no one can doubt who knows anything about the effects of this substance that the people who painted Persian miniatures and who designed the great arabesques of Islamic civilization, no one can doubt that those people had had the sort of vision which comes through participation in hashish. Likewise, the earliest Vedic texts of India mention something called Soma, and nobody really knows what Soma was. But one may guess, in view of modern practices in India, that it was some derivative of the plant cannabis, which is today in India and has probably for centuries been used by certain types of yogi. For example, the Shiva uh, worshippers uh, use it very widely in the form that is called bhang, which is a drink, or ganja, which is smoked. Uh, in China, there was for a long time in the Taoist school of philosophy a quest for the elixir of life. And uh, this was associated with Taoist alchemy. And when you read alchemical texts, you must realize that they are always veiled. The Taoist sages were apparently looking for an elixir of immortality that would convert a human being into an immortal. And it was supposed that if you hit on the right elixir, when you became an old man <clears throat> and your skin was shriveled, it would eventually peel off and reveal a youth underneath uh, as a snake changes its skin. And there are statues in certain parts of China of venerable old sages with their skin falling off to reveal a young face below. Many sages and en indeed even emperors died from uh, drinking concoctions that purported to be the elixir of life. One of the ingredients of the elixir was always tea. And of course tea as drunk in Buddhist circles is not the tea that you ordinarily drink. Uh, the real ceremonial tea of the Far East is not steeped tea leaves, but tea ground, green tea, ground to a very fine powder. And this is, has hot water poured over it, and then with a whisk it is stirred up into a thick mixture. And drinking a few cups of this puts you in a state of extraordinary wakefulness, and therefore has long been used by Buddhist monks 
for purposes of meditation. It has a mild psychedelic or consciousness expanding effect. The Tibetans likewise brew an incredibly thick tea which they mix with yak butter and to us it is an appalling concoction but to them very soothing and comforting and also wakeful. And as you know throughout the Amerindian cultures religion is very greatly centered around divine plants. The use of the peyote cactus, the use of yage, of uh, mushrooms such as psilocybe mexicana, the convolvulus type flower ololuqui, uh, the use of its seeds, and a very considerable number of other plants which have been catalogued by Professor Schultes of Harvard, even seaweeds, all sorts of funny things, are considered divine plants and the mushroom uh, psilocybe mexicana is known of course as teocanatl among the Indians a word which means the flesh of God. To an enormous degree then, throughout the world, there has been the use, going back as far as we can find any record, of some sort of plant either chewed or distilled or boiled or whatever, which transformed consciousness and was alleged to give mankind the vision of divine things. And therefore it was, in the precise definition of the term, a sacramental plant.